YouTube, Keith Buds here. Hey, we're gonna do something way different today. We're gonna do cooking with Keith Buds. We're gonna make some wild man chili today. We got two pounds of ground venison from my dear last year. Uh, this is currently defrosting. We'll get to that in a bit. Bean wise, we have chili beans, kidney beans, and maple cured bacon baked beans. That's where it's at, my friend. Um, we also have diced tomatoes, crushed tomatoes, tomato paste, the tomato trifecta. Um, can of uh, freaking corn. And for our spicing, we're going to use two packages of pre-made chili seasoning mix. Four packages each of these Taco Bell sauces. A little bit of mustard. A little bit of ketchup, a little bit of Frank's Red Hot Sriracha, only because I don't have any freaking Frank's Red Hot. We're going to have to use some olive oil, and we got some garlic, and an onion, and a bag of bacon. So, pause the screen now for an ingredients list. Alright, so what we're going to do... Well, that's defrosting. We're going to open up all these uh, sauce packages. I'm only going to do a couple on camera because it's time consuming. But we're going to get all of our liquids in one area. I just got a little uh, ramekin here. And we just want a of mustard. Okay. I don't do exact measurements because food is all about finding the flavor. A little pfft of ketchup. Matter of fact, we're going to give it just a hair bit more. Because I keep forgetting I'm making a double batch instead of a single batch like I normally do. Alright. Get our sriracha. A little healthy squeeze of that. Not too much. It's pretty spicy. I don't like my stuff way spicy. It's just not really my thing. Alright, so I'm going to finish opening up these packets. We're going to put them all in this bowl mix them all together and we're going to mix the chili seasoning in with the liquid so that the seasonings and everything can kind of break down a little bit it's not going to do a lot but it'll actually extract a little bit more flavor from dry seasonings which is something that with a regular dry seasoning you can make it kind of bloom before using it with a little bit of hot water uh, or stock or whatever you're choosing you know, but all right, pause for now and we'll be back in a couple minutes. All right, so we got all of our liquids in there. Sorry for the dog barking. We're making kind of like this chili paste. So it does not look pretty. It smells amazing though. So mix all this together. See how it's all becoming a little pasty. It's exactly what we want. I don't like adding dried spices. And another reason I don't like my chili too hot. I'm like, oh, I make the hottest chili. I make five alarm chili for a screw that. I don't like heartburn. A. B. Uh, if, 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 if there's too much spice, it takes away from the flavor of the rest of the meal and I'm like that with everything I you know I, I don't go any hotter than medium on stuff I like to keep my taste buds in check you know I don't feel like burning them off because then you can't enjoy something if it's too damn hot you got slug water you ain't getting that good flavor so that is freaking delicious all right so we're going to continue to let this defrost we're going to let this soak up all of them all that moisture and do its thing. I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning up and we'll get back to uh, the next step. All right, so pause. And just for a little special treat, I figured I just started opening cans. Uh, here I got one of these nifty little can openers. And if you don't know how to use one, it's actually really easy. I always just take 
you get the hook, the hook there, the other hook goes on the lip of the can. See how it just grabs onto it? Just like that. And all you do is for anyone who doesn't know how to really work one of these, you just go back and forth. And you know what? A lot of times in my experience, yeah, you tear that label off the can. Who the hell cares? But in my experience, I can actually do this almost as fast as a hand crank one. I didn't just get that slip up, I'd be done. And just take the corner and pop it up. It ain't a P38, but it's an awesome little can opener. And you guys have seen these before, so now you actually got to see one in use. And we're back. So, some people have a hard time getting tomato paste out, right? I don't. You take, after you open it, you hold it over the bowl. Yeah, pop the bottom open a little. Put a little bit of air get into it. Look at that. Practically comes all out at once. So we're going to take our tomato paste, our crushed dead tomatoes. I have a lot of fun in the kitchen. I'm a weirdo. I love cooking. All right. And if I can find something crazy new to cook, you bet your bippy I'm going to do it. We got our crushed tomatoes. I'm sorry, the diced tomatoes. My bad. Um, kitty beans that were drained and rinsed. And then we got a thing of chili beans that I drained most of the chili sauce off of. But that's going to add a little bit more tomato flavor to it. And then our can of baked beans. Damn, I should have grabbed a bigger bowl. That's okay. Double batch. And then... Ah, hell. Right before we dump this in, I'll add the corn in so this bowl is pretty damn full. But for now, we're still letting the meat defrost. We're going to set this aside. We're going to actually give that a stir in a couple minutes just so that everything gets, you know, mingled up and it gets all happy. And then we still got our spice paste mixture, which Ashley yeah, just took a little taste of it. It was a little hot for her. But like me, like I said, I like just a little bit of heat. I liked a little bit of tongue tingle. So, yep, we're going to let this set aside, wait till our meat defrost. That's going to be the last thing that we add in. We're going to do a lot of stuff in one pot. So we got like one dish, two dish, three dish. Not bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the heat on about medium heat. And I'm going to chop up the onion and actually I'm going to turn this off for a minute because I'm going to chop up that onion then we're going to saute the onions and we're going to add this delicious stuff and more good stuff so keep pause for more wild man chili okay so here in the Keith Bud's kitchen we tend to go a little freaking crazy yeah yeah this is a good testament to how sharp this machete is Got the old Black Legion Apocalypse Machete. Chop up that onion. I'm actually excited about trying this. Is this I figure it's funny. It's practical because that thing is brand new. And I washed it off before I started. So. And then. Move that aside. We take our. Yeah! Unwieldy! But I love it. It works so good. It's so friggin' sharp. And, yeah. and the, actually, the shape of this knife is actually, I'm sorry, my machete, is actually keeping the onion from being cut all the way through because the parang shape stops from cutting in the back. So the onion is holding itself together. 
Yeah, this is literally for comic effect, but I'm not even joking. This thing is better than one of my kitchen knives that I have. So... This is Keith Bud's kitchen. Yeah! We use machetes to cut up our onions here. Ah, yeah! Alrighty. There's half that onion cut up. I'm actually going to continue cutting this up a little bit more and cutting up the other half, but... Ah. You guys think of that? Yeah. Well... I haven't tested it out in the woods yet, but it cuts an onion like a son of a bitch. Alright, so we got a normal knife now. We're just going to... And as you can see, I know I'm not holding it right. I was actually a dishwasher, a line cook. I've worked a bunch of positions in restaurants. Pretty much the only thing I haven't been is a uh, bartender. I've done all kinds of stuff. Started out as one thing, moved up to Fry Boy, moved up to this. Next thing you know, I'm cooking with the big dogs, which sometimes it kind of sucks. Because they got so much more experience than you, you're just kind of sitting there like an idiot. But yeah, I used to chop onions and all kinds of stuff en masse when I worked at restaurants. So, we got those chopped. We're going to... Now, now we're going to put our pan on. This is a non-stick, I don't know how many quarts it is, but it's big enough for me. And I like using non-stick because I can do a bunch of stuff in one pan. So I'm going to turn the heat up to about 6 or 7, which is medium high. We're going to add a little olive oil. Let that heat up. Then we're going to grab our onions and start getting everything all happy. So we'll be back in just a bit. So while we're waiting for our venison to defrost, me, Keith Buds, and wifey, the Ash Buds, not our YouTube name, but check out our YouTube. What's your YouTube? Char it. Charmbrat789. Got that? Charmbrat789. So we're going to go for a little walk now while we're letting our meat defrost. Um, I turned the olive oil off. Put everything in the fridge, just waiting for that. I figured it should be done, and maybe by the time we get back. So we'll check in in just a couple minutes. So we're back from our walk. Had our olive oil going. We're going to throw our onions in. That's still defrosting. That's going to be a while. So we're going to get everything except for the meat done as fast as possible. So, yeah. I'm, I'm not using my tripod at the moment because my I just dropped my phone. I didn't feel like put it back on. So we're going to uh, toss these around a little bit. And if you guys are wondering, no, that was not filth, nor have I scraped the Teflon off my nonstick pan. I was cutting up a potato earlier and dropped it in there on accident. That was a little bit of the starch. So, we got the onions are going to saute. Just when they're about done, we're going to add the garlic in. We're going to take all this out, and then we're going to cook the meat. So, once this is done cooking, I'll turn her back on, and we'll continue on with our KGB's Wild Man Chili. Yeah. So, after a few minutes, uh, it's been maybe, I don't know, seven eight minutes uh, I got this nice pretty kind of golden color going on I take a healthy scoop of garlic matter of fact a little bit more because me I love garlic so put that in there and um, for all the people cooking out there non-stick plus metal equals removal of Teflon Let's not do that. That gets Teflon in your food. You, I prefer, I mean, you can use wood, but just my preference. I like um, the plastic and nylon ones. They're a little bit cheaper, but they won't melt. 
but wood harbors bacteria. Okay, and even if you wash it, there's still that off chance that you will get some form of bacterial poisoning. So, once again, I say uh, this uh, plastic or nylon, silicone. Silicone is your friend. I love silicone products. I got spatulas, I got cookware, I got all kinds of cool stuff. I got ice cube tray makers that are all, or ice cube trays that are all silicone. Really cool. I mean, it's one of the greatest things for cooking. So, these are almost done. What I've gone and done is I switched out the bowls. So, that's our bean, tomato. This is, this is ice cold, no meat chili right now. And also no friggin' flavor. So, I switched out the bowl from the defrosting meat to, whoops, getting plugged, to the bigger bowl so I can mix everything in. Um, as soon as this is done, I'm just going to slap it right in there. And then, I don't know if we'll add our... Oh yeah, by the way, our seasoning paste is like super thick, super intense. It's so good. I just tried some. And like I said before, the can of corn goes in very, very last. Like right before you're done cooking. So it lasts like 10-15 minutes. I just like to have that crunch of the corn. I like the bright color. Yeah, I dropped the damn lid. But um... Yeah, so as soon as our onion and garlic mixture is done, we'll throw that in here. And when the meat's done, we'll uh, defrosting. We'll go ahead and cook. So stay tuned. All right, everyone, we're back now. Um, our venison is completely defrosted. And something that I've always done with venison, because venison is such a lean meat, uh, I never cook it directly. I mean, like, you can use a little bit of olive oil and whatnot. Um, personally, I prefer to just do it in a little bit of water so that you steam it so that it doesn't dry out. I mean, it really doesn't matter because we're making chili, but it will be less dry if you put a little bit of water in as well. That whole circulation of steam it'll cook it a little bit faster it'll be juicier i actually do it when i do um venison burgers venison meatballs um i'll actually do them in about that much water um and then i'll cover them so that it cooks evenly and steams i prefer that it steams i'm nothing against grilling or anything like that i love to grill love me some um grilled venison but my personal preference is in a pan in strips instead of steaks I can cut thin pieces I can cut medallions matter of fact I might even just make another video because I actually have to cook my dinner I mean wifey's dinner is cooking here this isn't gonna be my dinner till tomorrow because I mean this shit's awesome when it's done but the next day when all them flavors just intertwine and oh man it's it ain't no joke it's so much better the next day as it is with so much other food but what we're gonna do if I can hit the right angle here okay phone does not want to cooperate there we go so we're going to turn it on uh, medium heat, maybe, I have an electric stove, which I'm not a fan of, I'd rather cook over gas, but for baking, electric it's where it's at, because the heat stays even, and I put just a little bit of water on the bottom, maybe a quarter inch of the pan, it has water, um, let's see if you grab I don't know why I put the olive oil away. We're gonna need it. So we're just gonna put just a dab of olive oil, like a quarter teaspoon, just enough. Oh, I'm also I'm just putting it in the fridge. 
Um, I left a little bits of onions and the caramely stuff in there. It's super good. So we're going to let this heat up. We're going to slowly steam. Look at, look at how beautiful that is. It is beautiful. And look at that. 100% organic. No hormones. No additives. No antibiotics. This was walking around in front of me. Now, truly, I feed myself, my family, my friends with what I take out of the woods and what I take out of the water. Everything from squirrel, rabbit, deer, turkey. Even though I've never really gone turkey hunting, like I've gone, I've gone turkey hunting, but I'm not a huge fan of it. Because I like being up in a tree stand. I like being able to kick back. You know, have that little bit of uh, extra freedom, if you will. That's why I like doing tree stand hunting. Um, so, yeah, we got the wifey's dinner's done. She's off at Zumba. I'm continuing my video. We're starting to get a little steam right here. So, once it gets up, we're going to flop that in there. And we'll start the cooking process. But, like I said before, I love, I love to cook. Wild game, man, you give me walleye and some venison, shit, that's better than surf and turf. That's like wild man surf and turf, which I like a lot better. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, nice porterhouse thing. Ooh, man, that smell just stopped me, that... Oniony smell. Oh, it smells so good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, we're going to take a quick break. We'll start the cooking process. And then we'll continue on from there. All right. Sound good? Awesome. Hey, just a quick little thing. I um, forgot to say it before. When this is about halfway done cooking, I'm actually going to add half a package of that bacon that I showed you before. And what's that, what that is going to do is add in a little bit more fat, a little bit more flavor, because everyone knows fat is flavor. And then, once the meat is done cooking, we will add in our chili paste that we made earlier. And while it's still hot, let that sink in and get all happy. Then we'll throw the rest of the bacon in. We'll throw the other bowl of stuff on there. And we'll check in at that point. So, we're cooking now, baby. Oh, yeah. All right. So, our meat is done cooking. Uh, everything is nice. And, it, oops, sorry for the noise. There's noise. I'm sorry. Um cooking noise. What do you want? Alright, so at this point we had the rest of the bacon bits. Toss that. We're going to grab our we grab our spice mix. Our chili mix. Chili paste. Hello. I grab our chili paste that we made. Pop that right down in there. Make sure to get all that out of there. That's good stuff. Oh, um, I also, I drained out the little bit of water that was in the meat. Not a total necessary step, but there was a little bit more than what I would like for my liking. So, we're going to go, while this is still hot, in fact, the heat is still on. I lowered the heat down to about um, medium low. Mix us all in. Mixy, mixy, mixy. Oh, yo, I wish, I so, I so wish you guys could smell this. It just smells absolutely incredible. Oh, that chili mix. You smell, you can actually smell the sriracha. You can actually pick out almost, the only ones I can't really pick out is the mustard and ketchup. But I can actually pick up the the sriracha, and the Taco Bell sauces. Now you may wonder why I did that. Um, 
I actually grab a bunch of packages because I like putting that on eggs. I'll take it to work with me. I'll put it on my ramen noodles, stuff like that. Um, so a little condiment packets help. So next we're going to add in our, oh yeah, our, our bean mix, our bean and tomato mix. that in there and as you can see this is a big ass pot of chili i mean this is this is beautiful this is a double batch um it's a real crowd pleaser the guys that work like it i bring some in every now and then um my family loves it in fact um ashley's dad he always wants some to take home whenever i make it so we're all nice and all nice and mixed up. As you can see, look at I mean just just friggin' beautiful. So now now comes the really kind of the waiting process starts. So we take our lid. We're gonna put it on there. We turn our heat down to Four, which is medium low as I said before and I do this for a minimum of three hours because like it's 6 30 now so 7 30 9 30 I'll be done I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer for half an hour and then I'm gonna come in check on it give it a good stir Make sure the heat's going. Make sure it's not bubbling too furiously. I seriously only put the lid on to stop the splatter. Because white stove. It's pain in the ass. So, we're going to let this sit. And I'll come in in about another hour and a half. When it's halfway done. And see where it is. So, we'll get a good idea of where the level is. I'm hoping to drop this down by maybe half an inch or so eventually. So I'm going to slightly, slightly put the lid on. I'm going to leave a little bit of gap. Here, I'll do it this way so you guys can see it. Leave just a little bit of gap for steam to get out because I want this to reduce down. I want some of the water to come out and I want everything to suck into the meat and have everything all homogenized and beautiful. beautiful all right guys we'll check in in a little bit all right let's take a look um been on there for about 35 minutes give it a good stir um i did a i did a taste test on it uh i thought it was missing a little bit of something needs needed a little bit of i put i like using montreal steak seasoning i put a little bit of that a little bit of onion powder a little bit of garlic powder and that kind of leveled out the flavor pretty good. So I know it's going to get stronger and stronger as it goes, but I'd like to do a little maybe half hourly taste test just to see how everything's mingling, if it needs something, you know, something like that. But, oh, man, that is beautiful. It's, I could watch that all day. So we'll check back in at halfway through the cooking process in about an hour. Alright, so this is halfway through the cooking process. Um, I did two taste tests. Um, Ashley tried it. She liked it. And we've gone down just a little bit less than a quarter inch. If you recall, was, um, I also took like two or three scoops out. It was about uh, right there when we started. So yeah, we're down a little bit. Reducing nicely. It smells amazing in here. I mean, <laughs> this is great. I'm telling you, you guys got to make this. Try it for yourself. You don't have to use venison. Use ground beef, but use the same technique for everything. And you will not dis be disappointed at all. All right? So we'll check back when we're all done. We'll do a final taste test on camera. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, so we're on the last 15 minutes of cooking. I literally just put this can of corn in. Um, I was having a 
Facebook chat with uh, Survival for the Poor. We were talking. He just put up a new video, Cooking with Chef Scummy. And I thought it was really funny that he puts up that. And I'm like making one of this, you know. Really good. So, other uses for this chili while we wait for it to cook. Last 10 minutes. Um, great by itself. It's awesome on nachos. Makes chili and eggs. I mean, chili for breakfast. You just can't beat it. Um, the possibilities are endless. I mean, you could probably put this on a shingle and someone would eat it. Because it's, it's, it's damn good. So, when we're all done, we're going to do a nice little taste test on camera. And we'll see you in about 15 minutes. Well, 10, 15, somewhere around there. All right. The time has come for the official all done, finally, taste test. Now, I prefer my chili. I tried it uh, plain, which was really, really good. I prefer my chili with a little bit of taco cheese and a little bit of sour cream. Now, I'm probably going to get some guff from some, uh, some chili purist out there. But, hey, I tried it. I liked it. Now it's just time to add the good stuff in that I like that brings out just a little bit more flavor. I like the creaminess and it cuts down a little bit on the acidity of uh, the tomato products. So let's give that a try. Oh, I might have to uh, pull a scrambled O here. Oh, look at that. Oh, it looks so good. All right. Final product taste test. I've only been working on it for the last mm, six hours or so. So. That's really good. All the beans and everything are slightly broken down. And all that nice juice and all that chili seasoning and that paste that we made. That's the way to do it. I'm going to do it like that from now on. Got a really good taste to it. The onions that are in it, you can just squish them between your tongue and the roof of your mouth. They're so tender. They're so delicious. That corn adds that little bit of body and texture. Fucking Sorry for swearing, but fucking phenomenal. This is like the second best batch of chili I've ever made. Make sure here we get everything in there. Got the onions, the corn. Look, look, look at the friggin' onion. It's limp. Yeah. That's the ticket. Well, I hope you guys like... Uh, new couple of cooking videos. Maybe I'll do some more if you all like them. I can make all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, not just chili. And not just wild game. I can cook. You put something in front of me, I'll find a way to make it delicious. So, um, I hope you guys try out this recipe. Like I said, this, this is like a, an amazing batch. Um, Try it out. I beg of you. My recipe, why not? I'd like to thank my dad for giving me his chili inspiration and the basic idea of how to do it. His is much better than mine. I just can't master whatever he did. I don't know what the hell it is. The man could barely do anything wrong. He was a great cook. Excellent woodsman. Loving father, amazing hunter. He was a great husband twice. So, well, without further ado, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed it. Try it. Tell me what y'all think. Give me some criticism. I love constructive criticism. Oh, um, something I failed to mention. Um, the last half hour of cooking, I put a little bit of Lori season salt in there. It was just missing a little bit. So a couple dashes of that started in real good. 
I just need that little extra bit of salt. But thank you guys very much. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you try it. I hope you enjoy it. And like always, like, comment, subscribe, share the video, make this shit. Tell me what y'all think. Peace. Later. Oh, peace. Later, YouTube.